So I'm joined by a very, very special guest this evening, Mr. Leroy Thornhill from The Prodigy. How's it going? All good, man. All good. Yeah, pleased to be here. I'm looking forward to tonight. Great. Well, we're really looking forward to your set. Now, uh, is this your first time sort of in the UK for a while? or? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Last time I played is uh, Isle of Wight Festival in the summer. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't do too many in England because uh, <coughs> sometimes... Um, and I can be too commercial. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I sort of, it's like a proper disco, you know? And yeah. I'm like, oh man, it's not <laughs> dance music, so yeah, it can be sure. a bit hard. Or other times, I don't really play the DJ game, you see, either, like, the follow all the scene and yeah. commit charts, and I don't really do that. So, uh, <laughs> so a lot of the sort of other break, break beaty things. Right. Uh, but I don't really do a lot of them sort of things, but again, uh, I'll do them in Italy where no one else goes and sure. different countries, you know, Asia and, bit more, and Russia yeah, a bit all different. the time and stuff, yeah, so, but, um, I mean, it's not for the, the people, I always have a good time here, but, mm. yeah, I don't know, I just prefer it a bit. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So you obviously had massive, massive success with The Prodigy, mm -hmm. were you DJing alongside your time in the band as well, or is that something that's come following leaving the band? No, no, I started DJing when I was uh, 15, 16, sort okay. of, God, 27, 28 years ago or something, so before the band I was <clears throat> into DJing, um, and then, uh, yeah, during the band, I, you know, I didn't really have much time, I used to get people asking me to play, but we were so busy, Yeah. Um, that if you had a weekend off, the last thing you wanted to do was go and DJ, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ever since and towards the end of it, yeah, just still doing music and got a new little band and yeah, yeah. It's That's great. Good. Yeah. Okay, so, um, I mean, obviously many, many hit singles with The Prodigy and like, uh, I'm sure a lot of DJs have had your records in their boxes for a long <laughs> time. When did you kind of decide as the band to make the transition from the sort of dance music rave scene to the more rocky electronic, I mean, you came back with Firestarter after a little break and that was obviously a completely different sound to your previous stuff. What, yeah. what kind of um, influenced that change? Um, I think <clears throat> what it was was um, I think we, we, it got to a point where we started getting a bit successful and we started playing at different festivals and then you start seeing different types of music all the time you mm. know, and the rock bands would be checking us out and we'd be watching the rock bands and stuff like that and um, yeah the sort of dance music started changing it started going towards just drum and bass really and um, yeah, I don't know, it didn't seem so much of a challenge, you know, when you first started you went out there and you were really scared, because <laughs> it was all new, you know, and then after a while it was, the dance thing was just, the dance thing, it was like, yeah, we know what we're doing here, we're comfortable here, and then all of a sudden we were playing at festivals with rock bands, yeah. and it was like, man, if we can rock, rock crowds, we're, you yeah. know, and um, yeah, so guitar influence, and we, we were always all into different styles of music, you yeah. know, as well, so... Um, I think it was just more of it's one of those natural progressions where you grow up and you, your music collection gets wider and wider as well and you're seeing different bands and stuff. So. And different, yeah, it's kind of an eclectic mix of things. Yeah. So. And your image changed quite dramatically as well, didn't it? Because obviously um, Keith ha went from having the long hair and the sort of ravey image to the full-on punk with yeah, the green yeah. spiky mohawk yeah, I mean yeah. what was that a deliberate choice or was that just uh, something that again I don't think any of it was really a, a planned thing it was kind of organic in in respect of uh, uh, like I said we were heavily influenced by a lot of the rock bands we were playing with and stuff like that you know and <clears throat> we fitted in the same category with the aggression of the music and the energy um, and yeah, I, I, I just think it was like a natural progression. When you're on stage, you've got a license to do anything as well, you know. And, and Keith has always had that sort of fiery character in him anyway. You know, even when he had his long hair, he still wanted to be set on fire. And stuff, so. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, just, it was just the direction that suited our, our energy, our, you know, tattoos and punk music and... 
uh, rock music energy you know, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And we'd always try to do that even from the start. The dynamics of the songs were written more like rock than um, so when it kicked in, it really kicked in. And yeah, yeah. Know. And how did it feel? I mean, you're obviously the time when that sort of change happens. You were competing in the charts against people like Oasis and the Spice Girls and Blur, and like to suddenly hit number one with a record like Firestarter in the UK. I remember that being quite, you know, a, a real unusual yeah, thing because yeah. music like that just didn't get into the charts then, no. or didn't certainly didn't hit number one. How did that sort of feel as an achievement? Um, I, I don't really think it. <clears throat> I mean, I think, I think we'd had what number one before that. I think <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember when we had well, the first single was number three. You right. Know? Yeah. And yeah. So everything we put out was in the top ten and stuff. And um, but that was it was never about that to us. So right. You know, we wouldn't do top of the pops and things like that because we didn't think they were cool. They were cheesy and stuff, and we didn't need. We didn't. You know, we weren't trying to better our careers by doing cheap things. That weren't your door, was it? I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, we didn't want to cheapen ourselves and stuff. So that, that kind of didn't matter. It's nice. Of course it's nice because it's recognition um, from people buying your music. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not what you're looking for. You're just looking for people to come and fill the venues and, you know, rock out. And same sure. as <clears throat> same as DJing and stuff. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, what have you got in store for us tonight? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I play quite hard. Okay. But um, again, a lot of the time, the crowd for me picks the music. I know certain ones I'm going to play and stuff, but um, <clears throat> I don't really know the first record. I've got a couple of intros. I'll choose one of them and then just see where it goes. Really, because just let it sort of flow organically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like I say, I know sort of some of the stuff I'm going to play, but. You know the crowds will pick the the music in terms of like if if, if the energy needs changing, you've got to know when to change it. Mm. You know, um, and play some bootlegs and stuff. So I always like to play a few things that people know or can recognise. I, I I think it's a bit frustrating if you go out and DJ just plays totally new music that you haven't heard. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, it's just if you got to stand there for two hours or something and you don't hear a single Charlie vocal yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. something, you know. So I'll play a bit of that and just see how it goes. I mean, I might play some drum and bass as well. It depends if people are into it. Yeah, know? cool. Well, I'm really excited to hear your set. Thanks so much for being here and thank you no for your time. No All right, cheers. Thanks, Leroy. Thanks no a lot. Worries.